All right, welcome back to another episode. I am going to walk you through another editing workflow tutorial using Imagine AI, where it ultimately learns my editing style through the power of artificial intelligence and edits my photos so quickly and it's really amazing. Um, so Imagine AI, as I mentioned, is a software program that learns your editing style through the power of artificial intelligence. And the way it does that is by having you upload at least 5,000 photos to learn your editing style. Now, let's say you use presets. Let's say you have your own presets or you've purchased them. Typically, you're going to tweak those to make them your unique style. So regardless, if you are using presets, not using presets, uh, it will learn whatever it is your end result is in a photo. So once you've uploaded 5,000s of your existing photos, it's going to say, okay, hey, this is what your editing profile is. Then you're able to send them photos, apply your editing profile with them, and then they're going to work their magic. They're going to send you an email when, it's, when your photos are ready. Then you're going to download it back into your Lightroom catalog. So it all like circles within the Lightroom catalog and then your edits are done. And for me, it's done very, very quickly. I am a brand photographer. Uh, and so most of my sessions are between a thousand, maybe 2000 images. And so once I have them cooled down and uploaded, I'm only having them edit between maybe a hundred and 200, maybe 250 photos. So it's actually pretty quick, but even wedding photographers that have thousands and thousands of images, hundreds of images, it's a really, really fast process. So I'm going to walk you through, um, another session. I've cold this session down, the one that you see behind here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick time lapse of that culling session so you can see if you're interested in seeing how I cull my images. Um, I know everybody does it differently, but in case you want to see that, it took me about, I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes, I think, um, to edit those down. But I'm going to do a speed lapse and then I will pop back in to see you and go from there. So now that I have my images called down, I'm going to go ahead and upload them to Imagine AI for editing. So we're going to do this edit step. You're going to send photos for editing from your Lightroom catalog. So in order to do this, I do have to close Lightroom. So we're going to go ahead and close. We're going to skip and then we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. So because I've used this before, I can use the recent button, which I'm going to do, or you can browse for your catalog. But basically you're going to need to find where your Lightroom catalog is and it's going to connect to it. So what it's done is it's brought in all my folders um, from here and my project is this one here. And so you're just going to select a project and it's going to show the number of images in that folder in your Lightroom catalog. But we're going to make sure that we only include the cold ones and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. But first we want to name it. And this is just 
for reference so that when you go to download the project from Imagine AI, once it's done, you know which projects, uh, which images you want to include. And I'll show you what that looks like. You're going to select your profile. You can have multiple profiles with Imagine AI. Let's say you're a wedding photographer and you have a black and white editing, editing style and a color editing style. You can actually do both as long as you have 5,000 images to use from each editing style to create that profile. Um, okay, so that's going to ask you some advanced options, like how do you want these edited? I typically don't want them to crop my images, but I do like to have them straightened. And then this is really important to make sure that when you're working with culling images, um, since I use stars and I use five stars for my keepers, I'm going to go ahead and do that in 165 images. So you want to watch that number, make sure it's accurate. However you call your images, you're just going to work through this. Um, include photos that are edited or not edited. So sometimes you might want to like quickly apply an edit to get that sneak peek out to your clients. So you can also have them like override that if you want. Um, and then that's pretty it. Show uh, show catalog content. You can also show it by collections if, if you do it like that. Um, but I don't, so I just keep it in folders. So we're going to select, select choose. Oh, I've already done that. So we're going to do Feb 2022. All right, choose. All right, so just crop no, straighten yes, the number of images, just kind of take a double check on that. We're gonna go ahead and send it. And then it's gonna give you this time and this is just to upload. Um, again, because I don't have that many images, it's done pretty quickly. I imagine um, the process would be longer for a wedding photographer or those that are have really high volumes of images that you're doing, but Generally, it goes by pretty quick. Um, and then once this is done, it's going to do its magic, which is awesome. And then what you're going to get is an email from them when the edits are ready. So for me, I think most of my projects are edited under 15 minutes. If you're a wedding photographer, that might, it might take a couple hours, but, um, or maybe less. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, it's super fast. Um, I know when I used to shoot weddings that editing could take like 10 hours to edit photos. It was insane. And call photos. Um, so it will definitely take a little bit longer than what it normally does. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and I will pop back when it's ready. Um, I'm taking note of the time and right now it's 10.51 a.m. 10 51 a.m. So I will check back when these are ready and I'll let you know how long it took. All right, guys. So I got my email about a minute ago and when I uploaded it, it was about 10 51. And so five minutes later, I got my edits and granted that it was only 165 photos, but that's still pretty amazing. So once you get that email, you're going to log back into your smart assistant um, and we're going to do the download step. So we're going to select the project, we're going to say OK, we're going to put it back in that folder, and then all you do is uh, start download. And then we're going to open Lightroom. And we're going to then go ahead and I do, you know, rated. That's how I call. So we're going to see how these populate. So you can slowly start seeing like these images get adjusted. Um, I do have a very light and airy look. So that's kind of my style. We'll see how these are looking. So with this session, um, a lot of people ask me, was this fully natural light? Did you use any additional lighting? So I love natural light. And most of these were done and great natural light, but actually a lot of them, I used a little bit of off camera flash where I bounced it. Um, I do plan on doing some tutorials on that, but if you head over to my Instagram at Jesse Wyman photos, you can see how I've bounced some of my flash. If you head over to my Instagram highlights, 
I do have some um, information there. Also at the brand photographer method on Instagram, I do share some stuff there as well. Okay, so let's see how well um, it got my style down. So we're gonna go take a look. We're gonna do the before and after um, module here. Let's do before and after, there we go. So slight differences, but this is pretty much my style. Um, again, I shot in a lot of natural light, but for this session, for this particular photo, I think behind me, I had a flash unit behind my left shoulder bouncing into a window. Um, this one here, again, just very like subtle differences, but this is nailing my session. But I also want to point out that there was different lighting situations. So, um, that's one question I get about Imagine AI is how well does it handle different lighting situations? Um, like this one, for example, was much like underexposed and it, it matched like this one, which wasn't as underexposed. Um, but then there were some like, like these, right? These weren't as um, light and bright to start with, but then it edits, it brightens it back up. Um, even like, let's do... Like some of these in the kitchen were like a little bit darker, but like, look how well that changes it to match. Let's kind of like go back to one in the bedroom here. Like the consistency between them is pretty good. Um, like this one is a little bit cooler. You can tell this one's a little bit warmer, so I might just tweak it a little bit, but um, this saves me a ton of time. So let's do like that one. And then let's see, let's see what other ones in the kitchen here. We've got, let's do like this one here. So it handles different lighting situations really well because ultimately what it does is it's trying to look at the end result of the image and regardless of how you got there, it's going to get you there. So what it's, it's different from doing the sync function in Lightroom and that syncing is going to apply the exact same edits. This is going to say, okay, like we, we know she likes light and bright. We know we want the blacks to kind of be around here and it's going to adjust. So like you can tell the, the settings on this photo are different. Let's see, are a little bit different in other photos. So like, let's do this. Let's exposure is like 50, um, 50, 41, 121. Let's do that versus like this one it changes the settings, but it tries to get it exactly um, the end result that you want. So let's just do a little comparison here. So you can see these photos look very consistent, but they're going to be very, very different from the editing process that it's applied. So if you think about it, the end image. So I know I'm probably rambling at this point, but um, so for this, I probably will just go in and tweak just a little bit, but ultimately I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, I think Imagine AI does a fantastic job. And then the last thing that I'll do is once I tweak these, I'm going to do the fine tune option, which is going to upload the final edits to keep learning and keep improving on my editing profile. So it will continue to learn your editing style. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I try to do these um, as often as I can along with other tips for um, photographers in brand photography because that is what I specialize in now and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.